Chapter 14 of Gladiator. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Gladiator by Philip Wiley. Chapter 14. Mr. and Mrs. Ralph Jordan Shane, Hugo wrote. Then he paused in thought. He began again. I met your son in Marseilles, and was with him most of the time until his death. He hesitated. In fact, he died in my arms from the effect of the same shell which sent me to this hospital. He is buried in Carsey Cemetery on the south side. It is for that reason I take the liberty to address you. I thought that you would like to know some of the things that he did not write to you. Your son enlisted because he felt the war involved certain ideals that were worthy of preservation. That he gave his life for those ideals must be a source of pride to you. In training he was always controlled, kindly, unquarrelsome, comprehending. In battle he was aggressive, brilliant, and more courageous than any other man I have ever known. In October a year ago he was decorated for bringing in Captain Croan, who was severely wounded during an attack that was repulsed. Under heavy shell fire, Tom went boldly into no man's land and carried the officer from a shell pit on his back. At the time Tom himself sustained three wounds. He was mentioned a number of times in the dispatches for his leadership of attacks and patrols. He was decorated a second time for the capture of a German field officer and three of his staff, a coup which your son executed almost single-handed. Following his death, his company made an attack to avenge him, which wiped out the entire enemy position along a sector nearly a kilometer in width, and which brought a permanent advantage to the Allied lines. That is mute testimony of his popularity among the officers and men. I know of no man more worthy of the name American, no American more worthy of the words gentleman and hero. I realize the slight comfort of these things, and yet I feel bound to tell you of them, because Tom was my friend, and his death is grievous to me as well as to you. Yours sincerely, Lieutenant Hugo Danner. Hugo posted the letter. When the answer came, he was once again in action, the guns chugging and rumbling, the earth shaking. The reply read, Dear Lieutenant Danner, thank you for your letter in reference to our son. We knew that he had enlisted in some foreign service. We did not know of his death. I am having your statements checked, because if they are true, I shall be one of the happiest persons alive, and his mother will be both happy and sad. The sight of a young Tom which you claim to have seen is one quite unfamiliar to us. At home he was always a waster, much of a snob, and impossible to control. It may be harsh to say such things of him now that he is dead, but I cannot recall one noble deed, one unselfish act, in his life here with us. That I have a dead son would not sadden me. Tom had been disinherited by us, his mother and father. But that my dead son was a hero makes me feel that at last coming into the Shane blood and heritage he has atoned, and so I honor him. If the records show that all that you have said of him is true, I shall not only honor him in this country, but I shall come to France to pay my tribute with a full heart and the knowledge that neither he nor I have lived in vain. Gratefully yours, R. J. Shane. Hugo reread the letter and stood a while with wistful eyes. He remembered Shane's Aunt Emma, Shane's bitter calumniation of his family. Well, they had not understood him, and he had not wanted them to understand him. Perhaps Shane had been more content that he admitted in the mud of the trenches. The war had been a real thing to him. Hugo thought of its insufficiencies for himself. The world was not enough for Shane, but the war had been. Both were insufficient for Hugo Danner. He listened to the thunder in the sky tiredly. Two months later, Hugo was ordered from rest billets to the Major's quarters. A middle-aged man and woman accompanied by a sleek Frenchman awaited him. The man stepped forward with dignified courtesy. I am Tom Shane's father, and this is Mrs. Shane. Hugo felt a great lack of interest in them. They had come too late. It was their son who had been his friend. He almost regretted the letter. He shook hands with them. 
Mrs. Shane went to an automobile. Her husband invited Hugo to a cafe. Over the wine he became suddenly less dignified, more human, and almost pathetic. Tell me about him, Danner. I loved that kid once, you know. Hugo found himself unexpectedly moved. The man was so eager, so strangely happy. He stroked his white mustache and turned away moist eyes. And so Hugo told him. He talked endlessly of the trenches and the dark wet nights and the fire that stabbed through them. He invented brave sorties for his friend, tripled his accomplishments, and put gaiety and wit in his mouth. The father drank every syllable as if he was committing the whole story to memory as the text of a life solace. At last he was crying. That was the Tom I knew, Hugo said softly. And that was the Tom I dreamed and hoped and thought he would become when he was a little shaver. Well, he did, Danner. A thousand times he did. Ralph Jordan Shane blew his nose unashamedly. He thought of his patiently waiting wife. I've got to go, I suppose. This has been more than kind of you, Mr. Danner, Lieutenant Danner. I'm glad, more glad than I can say, that you were there. I understand from the Major that you're no small shakes in this army yourself. He smiled deferentially. I wish there was something we could do for you. Nothing, thank you, Mr. Shane. I'm going to give you my card in New York. My name is not without meaning. It is very familiar to me, was before I met your son. If you ever come to the city, I mean, when you come, you must look us up. Anything we can do in the way of jobs, positions, he was confused. Hugo shook his head. That's very kind of you, sir, but I have some means of my own, and right now I'm not even thinking of going back to New York. Mr. Shane stepped into the car. I would like to do something. Hugo realized the sincerity of that desire. He reflected. Nothing I can think of. I'm a banker. Perhaps, if I might take the liberty, I could handle your affairs. Hugo smiled. My affairs consist of one bank account in the city loan. That would seem very small to you, Mr. Shane. Why, that's one of my banks. I'll arrange it. You know, and I know how small the matter of money is. But I'd appreciate your turning over some of your capital to me. I would consider it a blessed opportunity to return a service. A great service with a small one, I'm afraid. Thanks, Hugo said. The banker scribbled a statement, asked a question, and raised his eyebrows over the amount Hugo gave him. Then he was the father again. We've been to the cemetery, Danner. We owe that privilege to you. It says there in French, the remains of a great hero who gave his life for France. Not America, my boy, but I think that France was a worthy cause. When they had gone, Hugo spent a disturbed afternoon. He had not been so moved in many, many months. End of chapter 14